The High Republic, which launched earlier this year, has gotten a lot of criticisms from the Star Wars community. If you just search the High Republic on YouTube, you'll find video after video from various different YouTubers about how the High Republic is garbage or SJW trash, and that it's just Kathleen Kennedy pushing her crappy products on Star Wars fans again. So why exactly do so many Star Wars fans hate the High Republic? I'm going to uncover the main reason as to why there is so much hate and finally discuss whether these criticisms are justified or not. During my research on the criticisms, I came across many different reasons, but the number one criticism that many Star Wars channels and YouTubers claim is that the High Republic is SJW trash and it's pushing the agenda of identity politics. Literally scroll through the YouTube searches for the High Republic and you're gonna find at least 10 videos talking about how SJW it is. A lot of YouTubers have been pointing to the personal politics of the writers as examples of agenda pushing and forced diversity. You only need to look at the drama with Justina Ireland to find an easy example. This is closely associated with the involvement of Kathleen Kennedy, and it has been perceived that anything associated with her is basically bad storytelling and SJW trash. So how credible are these criticisms? Are they warranted? Well, the truthful answer is no. None of these criticisms have a shred of credibility. Now if you think that the High Republic is SJW, don't click away. Just hear me out and maybe I just might be able to change your perspective on it or at the very least, your perspectives on the criticisms surrounding it. Ever since the release of the sequel trilogy, many fans have not forgiven or moved past how much they hate the recent films. Today, literally anything that comes from Kathleen Kennedy, or is perceived to have come from Kathleen Kennedy, is immediately labeled as bad SJW storytelling. Which is why when the High Republic was announced, many fans were quick to jump to the conclusions and start to criticize it. Criticisms that have only continued after the official launch. Let me be clear. I fully understand that the sequels were problematic and that many fans were really upset about it. But at the very least, criticism surrounding the trilogy had at the very bare minimum some substance to it, whether it was the story direction, the music, or the writing. But with the High Republic, the biggest criticism basically boils down to it's SJW because it's SJW, which is as about as substantive as honestly hot air. In reality, if you were to really dig deep into these criticisms as shallow as they are, you start to question whether many of these so-called critics have truly read and understood the recent High Republic stories. I personally have read the comics and the books, and if you have done the same, you'll realize that there is actually very little so-called SJW elements in there. In reality, these stories read just like any other normal Star Wars story. The notion that these materials are pushing an agenda of identity politics is absolutely bizarre. There is absolutely no evidence to suggest that this is the case. Unless, of course, you consider a diverse cast of characters to be SJW. W trash, then there is really nothing to talk about. And if you do think that because there are more characters that are non-white, and therefore it's agenda pushing, consider the cast of The Mandalorian which has been heralded as the best Star Wars content we have to date. Just ask yourself, who are the cast of The Mandalorian? It is inherently contradictory that the fact that the Mandalorian is considered not to be SJW when it has an incredibly diverse cast. I've also heard that the High Republic is SJW because of the haircut, the outfits, and even the way certain characters look. And to that I say, really? Is that really the best you can come up with? So what if the haircut is in a particular fashion? So what if some of the men look a little feminine? It's, is that not a more accurate reflection of our society today? After all, we come in all shapes and sizes. You could also question as to whether or not these critics have even read the stories that they have so incessantly bashed on. If you take a look at some of the negative videos towards the High Republic, especially the earlier ones, you start to find that many of them were posted even before the official launch. 
How is that even possible? We are at a stage today where these YouTubers are criticizing things that haven't even been released and they are jumping to conclusions that it's all SJW and identity politics. Not only that, but just within the first few days of launch, you had YouTubers criticizing books such as The Light of the Jedi only to then proceed to say that they haven't actually read it. You only need to look back to see these nonsensical criticisms. These critics base their argument on anything and everything they could get their hands on, from the ideas board which has literally said nothing controversial in my opinion, to the art design of certain characters. The storyboard, or really the ideas board, was surprisingly a source of controversy, which frankly speaking just baffles me. It basically boils down to the fact that the storyboard has the words diversity and representation. So okay, I mean, what then? Just because it has those two words and now suddenly everything is bad? What's wrong with a little representation and diversity? I find it incredibly disingenuous that these YouTubers take issue with representation and diversity when it has been a cornerstone of Star Wars for a very, very long time. Some of the most iconic characters in the Star Wars universe have come to be as a result of it. What I find most ironic about the situation is that these are the very same critics who profess that they are against cancel culture when they are literally engaging in cancel culture themselves. The very nature of what they are doing, which is judging things before they even come out, screaming at tweets of writers and such, is exactly what cancel culture is all about. And I find it incredibly hypocritical that these very same people turn around and claim that they are fighting against so-called cancel culture or pushing back against identity politics, whatever that means. Recently, I came across a video talking about a recent High Republic story released specifically for Chinese audiences and only for Chinese audiences. This video in question basically argued that it was hypocritical of Lucasfilm that this story made for Chinese audiences won't have the same level of diversity that Western audiences are experiencing. Now keep in mind that this story is written entirely in Chinese. So how exactly did this particular YouTuber know exactly how much representation there was in the story? He doesn't speak Chinese, and currently, there is only an unofficial translation of the first chapter. I personally have some knowledge of Chinese, and I actually did my research on it, and the truth is, is that even this particular story reads just like a normal Star Wars story just with a main character who looks Asian. It really just goes to show that these YouTubers are not concerned with accurate facts nor being objective, but are just obsessed with chasing the next headline. Now, I did a video on this topic a while back and I did lay out some of my own criticisms of the story, mainly concerned about how it won't be getting an English translation and how the fact that it was a missed opportunity on the part of Lucasfilm, so if you are interested in that, here's a link on the top right. Now, don't get me wrong, there are sincere criticisms and concerns about the High Republic out there criticisms that come from a more rational mindset. Eckhart's latter's review of The Light of the Jedi is one such example. Another are concerns regarding continuity and coherence which are all valid. But when the biggest movers and shakers out there are just simply concerned with stirring the drama pot and pushing out the next big controversy, it is just so incredibly disheartening as a Star Wars fan. And the unfortunate reality is that there isn't enough focus on genuine criticisms that should be discussed. The truth is, is that many of these YouTubers and critics are more concerned about the fast and easy content that will get views. In recent years, we have literally seen Star Wars YouTube channels that have been built around a negative narrative whose only focus is to tear things down. So what does this say about the Star Wars community? The fact that we have successful channels built to generate negativity and unwarranted criticisms should absolutely be a cause for concern. Ask yourself this, what value do these channels even bring to the Star Wars community? Do they inspire? Do they excite? Or do they just leave you with a bitter taste in your mouth? 
Personally, I find it incredibly frustrating, and I believe that I speak for the majority of Star Wars fans out there who just feel incredibly tired and disappointed that the Star Wars YouTubers that we look up to are just concerned with tearing things down even when it's unwarranted. It is incredibly saddening to see that more and more channels, new and old, are absorbed into this world of gossip and rumors and are increasingly distracted from what made Star Wars great in the first place. When I started my channel, my goal was to share my passion for Star Wars so that future generations of fans can experience content that enriches and keeps alive that starstruck wonder for the Star Wars universe, just like how I was able to experience Star Wars when I was younger. I remember a time where Star Wars content on YouTube was mainly focused on lore, theories, and what-ifs, content that have sustained my interest in Star Wars for years. But today, it is simply filled with negativity and bashing. It's almost as if people aren't interested in what the universe has to offer, but are more concerned with what they can tear down. It really saddens me because 20 to 30 years down the road, when you have a younger generation of audiences who might have a growing interest in Star Wars and all they find is a toxic pit of negativity, I honestly wouldn't blame them for choosing to walk away. I think a question that all of us Star Wars fans have to ask is, is the legacy that this fandom leaves behind one of hate or a legacy that embraces hope and endless possibility? I apologize if I came off as a little bit angry and this really isn't a good reflection of what my channel is about. All I'm saying is, please give Star Wars The High Republic a chance. Is it possible that The High Republic turns out terrible in terms of storytelling? Absolutely. But don't just criticize it based on nothing, because if you keep tearing things down, don't be surprised that one day, no one puts anything up. And if you are someone who deeply dislikes the High Republic for the reasons I have mentioned above, and I hope that you can at least reconsider, or maybe even question at least, some of the criticisms you have heard. I know I'm going to catch a lot of flack and hate for this, but I just felt that someone had to come out and say it, and to challenge these baseless destructive narratives surrounding the High Republic and Star Wars in general. So, if you agree or disagree, or maybe I missed something, leave a comment down below and let's have a civil discussion about it. Anyways, thank you guys for making it all the way to the end. It really has been a long video, and I really appreciate everyone who has stuck around to hear me out. I am the Lost Acolyte, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks guys.